The Plymouth Art Center was started back in 1992. Nancy Smith, uh, who was the director of the Chamber of Commerce, led the way. Uh, she was at a small office across the street from the Plymouth Art Center, and she thought an art center for Plymouth would be a great idea. And uh, the Plymouth Art Center was formed then in 1993, and we've been going strong ever since, and so we've been here 30 years. The Plymouth Art Center engages people of all ages, of all backgrounds, to come and experience the arts. We offer a wide program of performances, uh, concerts, and we collaborate with other organizations as well who also like to present plays and musical events. The Sheboygan Historical Research Center holds their second Saturdays at the Art Center. And we also work with Youth Theater Company. Over the years, we've worked with Theater for Young Audiences. We've worked with the Women's Club. So anybody that's interested in the arts is welcome to come and participate at the Art Center. I believe that we make a huge difference in the lives of people. You know, it's always hard to explain what the arts do for you, but we really do bring joy to the community. And uh, I think if you stop in, you'll see that we have a wonderful, caring staff and all the artists are welcome here. And we just love the hometown community feel that we bring to the community. PATH is a United Way of Sheboygan County uh, school-based community impact initiative and it's an acronym that stands for Providing Access to Healing. And it really started in 2015 after a community conversation in 2014 uh, when our community health improvement plan uh, came, gave to light some of the needs for youth mental health services and really accessing care for those who have some kind of barrier. We've always had a need for children and, and young adults to be able to receive mental health services. But that need has never been so great as it has become, you know, recently. Um, students run up against barriers. Like, they know something's wrong, they know they need help, they need support. Um, but those barriers are often, you know, travel to services, access. Um, it, it is sometimes cost and it's sometimes things that, you know, maybe are or aren't covered. In 2017-18 school year, we came to the uh, Plymouth community and each year we typically serve about 60 students in the Plymouth School District. Um, since we came during that 17 and 18 school year, we've serviced about 267 students total. What we really have been so grateful so very grateful for um, United Way and the PATH program um, since the 17, 18 school year to think, I just hard to believe that it's been that long, but to think that over 200 students have received services that otherwise would probably not have had services, you know. Even through some of the challenging years of, uh, of COVID and after, you know, the fact that even, even to be able to use online services meant that they received services that they otherwise would not have been able to. So our heart is full. The Baymont was built in 2003, was purchased by Ramp Hospitality in 2007. The Baymont offers 61 guest rooms, a pool, a fitness center, meeting room, business center, and guest laundry. I feel the Baymont is a great asset to the Plymouth community. There are not a lot of hotels in the community and there's a lot of local events that take place within Sheboygan County that needs hospitality and housing. Road America Racetrack is a big supporter in our peak season starting in May through mid-October. We see a lot of race teams. We have plans in the future for expansion of extra rooms or possibly a new hotel. We would like to thank our staff for their hard work and dedication and the local community for their support throughout the years.
My grandfather started this company 57 years ago. He helped his son, Chuck, my uncle, open a Dodge dealership in downtown Plymouth 20 years later. So 37 years ago is when this dealership began. We moved out here in the mid 90s and built this store. And we've had a lot of success at this location. And over the years, the auto group has had a significant amount of growth. We now have three Chrysler stores in the group here, Manitowoc and Stoughton. And when the opportunity came to build a Jeep salon, uh, it was really a no brainer that it goes here. This is where it all began. This is our best performing dealership in our automotive group. And frankly, the employees in the town deserved it. So um, that's why we picked this spot. It's 7,500 square feet. We basically went 50 feet to the west and 150 feet back. So we added two detail bays and four service bays. We also added a couple more spots for quick loop uh, in the service drive. And then we added two uh, indoor delivery bays that also have chargers for electric vehicles. And then the showroom I'm standing in is the showpiece of it all. It's allowed us to be able to service our customers more on the service end than anything else. It's kind of interesting how we started from one little dealership uh, right next door to we now have three buildings on this campus between our Chevy store, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram store, and also our fleet and commercial building, which is across the street. And we sell literally hundreds and hundreds of cars out of those three buildings every single month. And of course, we just want to keep building on that. When I first arrived in Plymouth, I met several people who were involved in community activities. Harold Meyer being one of them, and of course, Harold knew everybody because he was in the gas station business. Once you attend meetings, uh, learn about what goes on in community, you want to be part of it. Being part of Rotary, being part of the American Legion and the VFW as a veteran, you get involved in so many activities that you have to just contribute any way you can, whether it's brat frying, serving beer, of course serving cheese because that's important, being able to talk to people and get to know people. Things gel. I saw the need to get more involved in directly participating in the management of the city. Never envisioned being mayor, running for office. There was just something missing, something that my background in finance would give me an opportunity to maybe make the next step forward. The duties of mayor continue every day, no matter where I go. Sometimes it takes me 30 minutes to get a gallon of milk at Piggly Wiggly. It's just the nature of it. You're on duty eight days a week. It just is part of what comes with the job. The excitement that people have when you stop and talk to them, whether they're tourists or local, it just makes your heart run faster and you say, what can I do next? What, what ideas are there? We get ideas from students about a dog park. We get ideas about activities from visitors someplace else that say, you know, this might fit in your community. So we're always looking at that welcome mat, trying to improvise, trying to ignite something. The art center, oh, it, it's such a gem in our middle of, of our community and it's supported by so many people. These are the things that make Plymouth unique. We want people to visit, we want people to continue to come back, tell their friends about it, and enjoy what Plymouth has to offer. Say cheese, please, you smile, it works every time. I own Ali Shah Boutique along with my husband. We've been here almost 13 years. It'll be 13 years in June. And we started out actually as a vintage lingerie shop because that is what I had done for 15 years before that. And we quickly realized that what Plymouth really needed was a downtown women's clothing store. 
So we quickly changed it all over. And as you can see, that's what we got going now. So I've been involved in the Rotary and Ladies of the Lake and Elkhart Lake, actually, the Plymouth Business Women's Group and a few other organizations. But that isn't really my passion. My passion is just helping people as they need to be helped. I've been able to use our shop as a platform to help like people that have been in fires and they don't have any clothing, etc. And I can either pack up a nice bag for them and take it to the fire scene or have them come in a few days later and get some things. Or I like to work with the schools. I know how hard it is when you go to school and your clothes are not what everybody else is wearing. So a few times a year, I like to work with the Plymouth schools and the Elkhart Lake schools. And they give me some names of people and I just let them come in and have an awesome shopping spree. You know, I, I try to make it as fun as I can because I just like to help people. Hockey Plumbing was established in 1983, uh, 40 years ago. It's our 40th anniversary by my dad and mom who uh, opened it up out of their house and now we're in this building full of antiques here on Division Street. Shortly thereafter, I guess my brother and I joined the company um, mid-90s and we've been through it. We took over the company from my dad in 2011 and now I'm the sole owner. And that goes back to my dad's roots of having good customer service at a fair price, um, treating your customers with kindness, respect, compassion, especially they know when they need us. Um, we realize that they're having a bad day when they call us and then we try to show up and do what we can for them. I think Plymouth is special. Uh, I've lived here all my life. My grandparents are from here. My grandfather was a teacher here. And I've really been enjoying giving back to the community, um, whether it be the school district, giving back a saw that we just did, or um, we're involved with the Alzheimer's walk and uh, somebody who has an emergency, they just don't know what to do for a leaky drain can run over or a business owner. We're starting a remodeling and I don't know who to call or where to start that we can help you start. You know, we've worked with people like Hartman's Bakery on their remodel, um, the Vower restaurant with their remodel. They didn't know where to start and says, we can help you. We'll get you through this. Uh, we'll go through the state plan approval process for them and try to keep their costs down as much as possible, but do a good quality work that they don't have to call us back in a year or even five years and say, yeah, what you installed didn't work. We, we want to do a job right the first time and not have any callbacks. And I think that's important to have somebody fair, honest, giving back that we're going to do high quality work at a reasonable price. Pleasant View Realty uh, was founded by my parents, Jim and Gail Capellan, in 2002. Originally, they started with four realtors, and since then, we've grown to 23 realtors and three admin staff. Um, our growth has been actually quite exponential, thanks in part to not only what my parents have done, but the agents that we've brought into the business as well. Everybody has great ideas, promoting business, and just the conversation we're having with everybody with internally um, helps us grow faster. Plymouth is a, it's just, it's a strong community. It's strong in its roots. It's strong in the people that represent it, the other businesses, the family owned business, and really people do take pride in this community. We're gonna keep investing back into the business and back into the community that supports us. Um, I like the, the personnel, the staff that we have here. We don't have to be the biggest. I just really want to do the best at what we can do, which is to sell real estate to the highest level that we know we can and have happy clients, sellers, buyers throughout the transaction and especially at the end of the transaction. As far as being nominated, we're very honored to be nominated. It's not something that we're going to take lightly. We want to, um, again, continue to do what we do best. And there's always room for improvement no matter what. And as things change, as communities develop, as technology changes, it's definitely, it's a matter of embracing some of those changes and going along with it. Some things work, some things don't. It's growing pains along the way, whether you've been in business 20 years, like we are celebrating this year, or 200 years, it's always gonna be about growth and change.
I moved to Plymouth about 21 years ago. I've owned the salon Clips and Tips for 11 years almost. I heard that somebody was closing their doors and I had the opportunity and I took it and it has been great. I have uh, 11 employees plus myself. We have nail techs, hairdressers, estheticians, massage therapists, and we can take care of you from head to toe doing any service that you would find in any salon or spa right here in downtown Plymouth. And we work as a team together uh, because I have employees instead of renters. It makes it a lot easier because we're all working towards the same goal instead of individual goals. I love being part of the downtown community. I love being part of the dam so that we can try and um, enhance downtown Plymouth. I'm also part of our local uh, chambers PRN group and I love that as well. Everybody seems to work together again for the same goals and we all want Plymouth to grow but, but in the same and kind of right direction. Um, there's no animosity towards anybody. There are other salons in Plymouth uh, that are great. I refer them to people and people from the other salons refer us as well and I think that's awesome. There's no no bad feelings or anything like that and I just think Plymouth is a great community. I love being part of Plymouth. I'm Alex Neesman, uh, fourth generation owner of Neesman's Diamond Center. Uh, retail jewelry and service, uh, customized design, repair, things of that nature. What I like about doing business in Plymouth would be that most of the people are going to be straightforward and honest, similar to how I am with the business. My great grandfather started it, moved it to Falls and I believe 32, but then my grandfather moved it to Plymouth in 55, built the store in 57, and then we moved out here in 2008. Not sure why they chose this area, but I'm pretty glad that they did. Here at Neesman's we sell anything from sterling silver charms on up to diamond engagement rings, uh, colored stone, earrings, anniversary, service wise, we do pretty much anything. Ring sizings, ring cleanings, custom design, uh, remounting, which would be taking apart old jewelry, setting it into new jewelry, any type of welding, cleaning, taking it apart, putting it back together. One thing that I never thought would be something that I would take into consideration or take pride in is the when you make something for somebody, the enjoyment that they have in it. I've gotten the opportunity to see that with you know, like my grandfather's and my father's stuff. When you put something together, you know that's actually gonna be around for longer than you, that's kind of neat. We've been in Plymouth since 55, so I'm hoping to continue that on for as long as I possibly can, and I hope one of my kids maybe will take it over so that uh, we have another generation to keep going. Matt Kazkowski and I started the company in uh, 2004. We we're from Plymouth. We both grew up here. We went to Plymouth High School and uh, we were part of the video production classes at the high school. Shortly after college, we both moved back to the area and we got together and the idea to start a company kind of came together. Over the last 20 years, we've worked with uh, so many different businesses in the area. We create recruitment videos, training videos, videos for social media, corporate communications, basically any type of video you can think of. We like to be part of our client's team. You know, when we work with our clients, we like to understand their business. You know, what are their goals? What are their needs? And then we basically become part of the team. They need something, they reach out, they call us, and we're on it. We work with a lot of nonprofits in the community because we want to give back. We understand the good that they're doing in the community, and so we want to help them. We want to be part of that. What I like about Plymouth is that it's a small community, and people care about each other. You know, if I walk to the post office, chances are I'm going to run into several people that we've worked with. It's a comfortable place to do business because people are honest, they're friendly, we help each other out. I think Silverwater just plugs right into that positive momentum that Plymouth has. 
We're loyal to our clients like family, and we love the unique adventure and challenge that each project brings. We invest in our clients' success, lives, and dreams, and we look forward to being a part of the continued success and prosperity here in Plymouth. Well, I started the office in 1993. So um, I had worked in the area, I'd worked for Dr. Richter in Plymouth, and um, I kind of branched out on my own in 1993. There's not a lot of private optometry as much anymore, which is unfortunate, but I really feel like you get that personal touch because you can really relate to patients. And I've had patients who have been, you know, with me loyal for more than 30 years. So those patients have given back to me and made me a better person, given me better advice on being a better parent, um, just enjoying it. It's kind of funny, but on any given day, sometimes I'm hugging somebody who's lost their loved one or some guy's making a joke and we're all laughing. It's, you know, it's this big continuum of kind of enjoyment and fun and sharing your life. Just being in Plymouth, it's a great small town, which I think anybody who's from here or lives here knows it's a lovely small town. So I'm just glad to be, you know, contributing to that and contributing to other uh, charities within the community. I'm a breast cancer survivor, so I'm always doing promotions or charitable events for Susan G. Komen and breast cancer prevention. Project Angel Hugs is, of course, a really big, you know, prominent one. Just being in the Plymouth community, just loving all the patients, loving those patients in their lives, and they've entrusted me with all their care, and that's kind of really just seriously an honor and a privilege. It's really just been a beautiful life, and I'm grateful and sad to be saying I'm going to retire. Uh, but it's maybe time for some other fun adventures. The Plymouth Historical Society organized in 1996 with a group of people from town and they originally met in a resident house here. But in 2006 we purchased this building and we opened the museum in November. It comprises three floors. We've got a first floor that has a variety of different types of exhibits, artifacts of local interest. But what's more interesting is in the lower level, there's actually a Streets of Plymouth, somewhat kind of like I call the Streets of Milwaukee. There's different types of storefronts that would have been present on Mill Street as far back as 1869. We have a mural painted on one of the walls from an actual photograph that was taken in that year. Uh, depicts a lot of the buildings that stood in downtown Plymouth. And currently three of those buildings still survive. But if you want to find out which ones they are, you're going to have to come down to the museum to check that out. Well, the value of the museum itself, it brings back a lot of history. And without our history, I don't know where we would be today. For students that are coming into the museum itself, they're going to see a lot and learn a lot about our history from World War I, World War II, we have a lot of Civil War exhibit material as well. And of course, Plymouth, noted for its cheese industry, they're gonna learn a lot what went on in our local little area, including something that was called Cheeseville that many people now no longer remember. So it's important for everybody to, to know that this museum is not funded at all. It's, we completely rely on our volunteer base, um, and donations from private and, and public donors. So um, everything that you see in this museum is a donation. It's been um, given to us. And we have a great group of volunteers that, that helps by you know, rolling up their sleeves and doing the dirty work. Um, I think people, they walk past the building all the time, shopping downtown, and don't even realize that we exist. And um, if they know that we exist, they don't maybe understand to the, the fullest extent of what's, what's here. So um, it's just a, a cool place to come and visit. We have a variety of, I'll call them fundraising events or, or things throughout the year that, that people can help support, either volunteering their time or donations. I mean, we, we serve food at many of the band concerts. We have our wine event. We have a Christmas event. Um, a lot of ways people can be involved. I encourage everybody to uh, become a member. It might sound kind of scary, a member, what do I have to do? But you really have to do, do nothing. Memberships are very inexpensive. Uh, with a membership, you get our newsletter, you have access to the museum, um, you, you find out what's going on and in ways you can help support. So I really would encourage everybody to stop at the museum, 
Uh, visit us at any of the events um, coming up, Mill Street Days, the, the Family um, Music Fest will be the first ones this spring and summer. Um, and then check us out online and uh, become a member.